If you just upgraded your steering servo for the first time or you're thinking about doing it, it's important to set the endpoint adjustments for that servo to ensure it operates smoothly and to prevent it from failing prematurely. That's why today we're going to show you what endpoint adjustments are, why it matters, and then we'll demonstrate how to set those endpoint adjustments using an aftermarket programmable transmitter that could apply to any vehicle, and then we'll show you how to set it for an ARMA vehicle, and then lastly, a Traxxas. First off, your endpoint adjustments, or EPA as it's referred to, is a solution to an RC problem that we will all come across. What's the problem? Well, the steering in an RC vehicle has two different systems working together, and they need to be working in harmony to operate smoothly. The first system is the electronic servo, and then the second are the mechanical steering parts in your vehicle. And the thing is, is that they have different amounts of travel that they can throw. Often what happens is the servo has more travel amount than the steering parts, as seen here. Even though the steering has traveled completely to one side, the servo is trying to travel further. You can also feel this effect in the transmitter steering wheel, where it has more room to rotate, but the tires cannot move anymore. You can also see the entire suspension arm and the attached components kind of being yanked back by the horn because it just has no more room. And here lies the serious problem. Problem. When a servo continues to push against a steering system that is maxed out to its limits, the servo motor instantly stresses out and excessively heats up, which ultimately leads to the servo dying prematurely. This is why an overextended servo is often loud, noisy, or buzzy, because it's being stressed too much. <laughs> So how do we solve this problem? The solution is easy. We use the endpoint adjustment function in our transmitter to limit the travel amount of our steering servo. Like the name implies, endpoint adjustment, we're really just adjusting the endpoint of the servo travel or the maximum extension that it will move. Now adjusting your EPA should always be done when you install a brand new servo, if you've just built a new kit with a new servo, or if you've just gotten a brand new ready to run, it's a great idea to double check those EPAs, although they're usually set from the factory, but not always. Now one last thing before we show you how to adjust your endpoints, it's worth noting that it is possible to not have your endpoint adjustments set far enough. It won't be harmful to your servo, but you won't have the maximum steering that your vehicle is capable of. So our goal is to set the endpoints for the servo right at the maximum limits of what your steering is capable in your vehicle. So we're getting maximum steering travel out of the vehicle without overextending the servo. So let's show you how to set your endpoint adjustments three different ways or styles with different transmitters. And I also wanna point out that before you set your EPAs in any vehicle, you should always make sure that your steering trim is set correctly so your vehicle is pointing straight and drive straight on the ground. If you have to set your steering trim after you've already done your EPAs, it's gonna mess up your endpoint adjustment. So let's begin. How to set your EPA with an aftermarket transmitter featuring a display. Set your vehicle on flat ground. Turn on the transmitter, then turn on the vehicle second. Find the EPA setting in your transmitter menu. This will vary depending on the transmitter you have. Reduce the EPA percentage down to 50% for both the left and right side. Now, turn your transmitter wheel to the left fully and keep it there while you slowly increase the left side EPA. Pay close attention to the movement in your tires and continue to increase the EPA until your tires have stopped moving and the suspension arm is not being yanked back. Once the tires have stopped, this is the limit of your mechanical steering system in your vehicle. At this point, it may be necessary to slightly decrease or increase the EPA again to find the absolute sweet spot. Once finished, repeat this procedure with the right side and then you're done. How to set your EPA with an ARMA RTR vehicle. For current ARMA vehicles that include the Spectrum STX2, STX3, and DX3 transmitters, you can adjust the servo travel with the steering rate knob that will either increase or decrease the overall steering travel, but it does not adjust the left and right side independently, but that's okay. Again, set your vehicle on flat ground. Turn on the transmitter and the vehicle second. Now turn your transmitter wheel fully to the left and then to the right to observe if the servo horn is overextending. And then use the steering rate knob to increase 
or decrease any steering travel as needed. Pay close attention to when the tires stop their movement and if the suspension arm is being yanked back. Once you've found the optimal spot, you're done. How to set your EPA for Traxxas RTR vehicles. If you have a Traxxas TQ transmitter, unfortunately, it does not have an EPA function. But if you have a Traxxas TQI transmitter, here's how you program your EPA. First, set your vehicle on flat ground. Turn on the transmitter, then the vehicle. Now we'll have to enter the programming for the TQI transmitter, which is actually quite robust and offers many options. But let's keep this simple. This is all we need. First, Hold the menu button down for three seconds until the green light starts to blink once. Now we're in program mode. Now hit the menu button once. Now hit the set button once. Now hit the set button one more time. Now hit the menu button once. Now twice. Your TQI transmitter should have three red blinking LED lights indicating we are in the end point programming. Now let's adjust the left side and all we have to do is turn the steering wheel and the transmitter to the left, but not all the way. Instead, use the wheel to find the best endpoint for the left side, where your tires are turned all the way, but not overextending the steering servo. When you found that sweet spot, hit the set button on the transmitter to save that spot. Once complete, repeat this procedure for the right side. And when you're done, hold down the menu button on the transmitter and the LED will return to a solid green light. And there you have it guys, setting your EPA is really darn easy for your steering servo once you know how to actually do it. And it'll alleviate so much stress and strain off your steering servo that it should last you a long time. There are a few other areas with RC vehicles where you'll want to set your EPAs. With nitro vehicles, you have a throttle servo and you want to make sure that that throttle servo is not overextending when it's opening the engine carburetor. You want the servo to pull just enough that the carburetor is opening 100%, but not more than that. And then the flip side of when the throttle servo is applying the mechanical brakes, you don't want that servo stressing out trying to push those brakes too much. You want it just enough where it will apply the right amount of brakes that you want. There's also applications with RC rock crawlers and trail trucks that may use a dig servo. In those situations, setting the endpoints correctly will be crucial to the function of that dig and the longevity of that servo. Essentially, whenever you use a servo in an RC application, it's really good to double check those endpoint adjustments. I hope this video was useful for you guys. If it helped, give it a like. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm Brett from A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.